Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeks Varna. On today's video, we're going to be having another interview with Callum Holland from the CAA. And this time we're going to be talking about the background and the decision processes which took place regarding the withdrawal of the EU sea label drones here in the UK. If you're new here and you want to hear more from this series of interviews with the CAA on topics like VLOS and FPV, etc., then hit the subscribe button. And if you're one of my regulars, please continue the new trend of hitting that like button nice and early. It really does help the channel. Let's get on with it. Okay, up next, we're going to be talk about um, another hot topic, which has been particularly within the hobby, um, as, as it has been something which, which a lot of people have been um, somewhat confused about, somewhat frustrated about, uh, which again, I think is partly down to misunderstanding of the process, but is uh, sea labels and um, the fact that we're not going to be able to, beyond uh, the, the law change coming, we're not going to be able to uh, uh, use EU sea label drones within the UK. What was the process in terms of, uh, I, I suppose, parts, a large part of the hobby feel like they've missed out on something here. Um, is, is, is that the case? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think so. You know, as I've mentioned before, I'm a member of the Referential Committee and I have been since I was about 12 years old. And you know, if, if we look at some of the additional provisions we've been provided in the open category over the past couple of years, especially sort of the sub-250 world, um, but those were provisions that simply weren't available to us um, prior to that. The, the C labelling um, point around clarification, you know, that is a or was a Department for Transport decision. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain if you were to reach out for the Department of Transport, they'd, they'd be pleased to comment on that. I can talk a little bit more about the process and, and, and perhaps how that decision came about. You know, we all are fully aware of the, the, the consultation that we ran, I think earlier in the summer, um, and, and we provided that consultation response document on what people said. You know, clearly that there wasn't a question there around, would you like to see the continuation of the EU um, uh, sea label scheme. The, the, there, there is a bit of a bigger picture situation here when we're talking about sea label. It, it's unfortunately not as simple as just simply uh, allowing the use of uh, a European sea labeled uh, RPAS UAS being flown within the United Kingdom. So some of the uh, protection that comes with uh, class marked UAS is not just at the point of manufacturer, but processes put in place by the nation states to ensure the compliance with those manufacturing standards and, and, and import and export as well. So there's organizations like conformity assessment bodies, market surveillance authorities that countries have to put in place to support a class labeling scheme. And, and it's around product standards. So it, it wouldn't have been as simple as, well, we will accept European C labeled UAS within the UK. We'd have to create two new organizations uh, with, with filled with people and resources to support the, 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 the use of European class labeled UAS. So unfortunately on face value, it may have just seen, why can't we let us do it? That, that there's a lot of things in the background that are required day to day to enable a, a class mark um, UAS space market within the United Kingdom. But fundamentally it was a decision made by the Department of Transport and you know, I, 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 I won't speak on, on their behalf, yes. really that might be a, a question you would like to pose them uh, and I'm sure they, they provide a response. Okay, so it, it, but in, in, in terms of the, the, the technical side of things where we, we sort of get the, the headlines again of, of the sort of last minute U-turn and, 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 that, and that type of comment online, um, it isn't necessarily a, 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 a U-turn but more really I've, I always saw it as, as a closing of a loophole from the point of view that we were only intended to use the EU sea label drones until the uk bodies were in place the, the the specific ones which you're talking about and of course once we know that those that we're not going to be having those bodies because we're going into a review process as per the public consultation um then we of course we end up with a situation where we can't continue using the e-label so it, it was kind of more a loophole closing than a than a a, a u-turn in in general direction wasn't it as such yeah, it, 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 there was no decision made prior to that to say that we would be adopting you know, European class mark UAS. There's a provision within the regulation that we adopted uh, as a result of leaving um, Europe. Uh, and what it was, was removing that provision to automatically adopt European class, class mark UAS. Because as the UK, we want to revisit the open category and see what that looks like for us. 
for the best fit, but not just the, the, you know, the, the, the regulator, but for the whole of the regulated community as well. Uh, would, would you expect there to be a replacement system um, or an adoption of, of the existing system, whatever whatever the review comes out with, would you expect that to be after, fr fr from 2026 onwards, or is that something which could happen sooner, or is, is, is there a roadmap for that kind of thing at the moment? Yeah, so clearly we've, we've already kicked off this conversation and we've been having the conversation and conducting a piece of work for quite some time internally on on, on what aspects of the open category we might want to look at evaluating uh, and more importantly we might want to present to the regulated community in, in in the in the guise of a consultation for them to have an opinion we, we have this deadline in 2026 so something needs to be done prior to then it's absolutely our intention that that deadline isn't extended we, we wouldn't want that to happen clearly otherwise we would, the deadline wouldn't have been put in so you know I would be hopeful for some consultations around the open category and a reevaluation of the open category, not just sort of the, the, the class marking side of things. Um, you know, in in twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So that, that gives a bit of clarity um, in 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 terms of the the roadmap. Okay. Well, th well, thank thank you for clarification on that one.